Well, good morning, folks. Richard Jean here. I'm back on the river again, back on the Tennessee River. And today we're going to be doing something that's been highly requested and seems to be kindly a fad, something I enjoy doing at times. It's a specialized, I'm going to categorize this as a specialized way of fishing, and that's with a crankbait for crappie. Now this is a bitsy crank. You can get on most anywhere. Real small, real small bait right here. But uh, the reason I call it a specialized bait is because crappie has to be set up just right to catch, to catch them. And it's just that simple. Anywhere from four to five foot deep, if I know that uh, crappie are suspended at that depth, this bait can be effective. It can be real effective. Um, it's not what you call a high percentage bait at all. Uh, the conditions has to be right, like I'm trying to explain right here. Now, this is all my opinion. But it's not like a jig where you can control your depth once you locate how deep the fish are with a jig. By using a countdown method or whatever method that you use, you can keep that jig slightly above the crappie. But this bait right here is the same way. Um, now today I'm going to be using two pound test line and a real long eagle claw rod. This is a six foot six rod. And what makes it a good rod or a perfect rod for this application is because it's real limber. Now these hooks right here is probably about a size, I'm going to say a size 10 treble hook. They're real small. You need a rod that's real limber and forgiving when you're using these baits. If you don't, you're going to lose far more crappie than you're going to land. Um, I'm going to start off with two pound test line, and if I have to, I'll go to four pound test line. It depends on how the crappie are acting. If I want this bait not to wiggle as much, or wobble as much, I'll go to four pound test line. Uh, it's a real simple way to fish, but very effective if the fish are set up just right. Let's take this bait and look at it in water right here. Okay, y'all see that? Let me make sure y'all do. Y'all see that? It has quite a bit of wobble. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drive that crank, crankbait down to its maximum depth and I'm going to reel it just about like that slow as I possibly can I don't want a lot of wobble so it's going to take once I drive the crankbait down it's going to take a slow reel methodical wind I don't like to use big words and the reason is because I can't spell methodical I don't think a slow wind. <laughs> let's catch one, folks. Okay, let's cast this bait out here. Now, to drive a crankbait like this, I don't reel it real fast like that to get it down. What I do on a Bitsy crank, let's make that cast again, is to get it down there. I just reel it real slow. You'll get it down quicker that way. It won't spin out with you. And the retrieve is going to be just about like this. Just a slow wind. Every once in a while I'll stop it and let the bait suspend. Just like that. Real slow. Now the bite will be soft, usually. I watch my line, I watch for that line to just hop or you'll feel a tink or you won't feel anything hardly, just the pressure. They hit these baits real soft. Okay, let's catch us one. There we go. First fish of the day. Now y'all are seeing how that limber rod plays a major role in keeping this fish on. It's a crappie, not a very big one. 
but a crappie. Now the key to this right here is retrieving very, very slow. You don't want a lot of wobble and wiggle. Here's my net. Y'all gonna laugh about my net. That's all I had. Now I forgot my dead blame net now. And the net's really important fishing this way. Let's look and see how he's hooked right here. Well, he's hooked up my net. The only hook that got him was the front hook. Y'all see that? One hook. That's typical crankbait fishing for bass or crappie. But that limber rod and it being fiberglass instead of graphite probably saved this fish. Those hooks are real small. You got to watch it. So that's a perfect rod in my opinion for this type of fishing. Let's let him go. Him was oh about a nine inch, nine and a half inch at the most black crappie. Let's catch another one. There we go. This is a little bit better fish right here, folks. Keeping him on. Limber rod is the key. This is real good fish. Just take your time. I believe it's a white crappie. Sure is. Let's get her net right here. Pretty good white crappie. But see, that rod is working with me. No doubt. <laughs> I love my net, don't y'all? <laughs> it's better than not having nothing. Use what you got. But this is a pretty good white crappie right here. Oh, man. Always, folks, bring you nets. Y'all probably do. It's just me that don't do it. Hey, he just come off. It's a pretty good little white crappie. So we've caught a white crappie, I mean a black crappie and a white crappie. Now the water is stained. So uh, I selected, and I'll show you right here. Ain't that pretty. Let's let him go. I get a little sidetracked with what I'm trying to say a lot of times. Go on back in there. I uh, pre-selected a color account of the water being dingy, so I selected a little Bitsy crank with sharp truce on the back. You know, so it, that's a very visible color in this clarity of water. If I was fishing for bass, well, I'd done the same thing. I'm having a fit with this net. This is the reality of fishing. But a net is a must fishing with these little crankbaits. And another thing that I'm going to mention real quickly before we start back, especially on the, the back treble hooks, uh, I bend them out just a little bit. Now that one's a little bit too far out. Let me fix that. I open the gap a little bit. I keep them on better like that but uh, I'm gonna fix these hooks and we're gonna catch another one that's a little too much of a gap really I bend them out and then sideways there he is take it real easy right here I lost one one a while ago with kind of these little hooks You'll lose them if you really don't have a good forgiving rod, folks. That fish hit real light. Yep. A little black crappie right here. Okay. All right, feller, what you got in your face? Yeah, forgive me, folks, if I don't get my little net right there. This one's hooked pretty good, I believe. Yeah, what do you got in your face right there? Well, in reality, he just had one hook in him right here. They keep 
they're just barely nipping at it, getting that back hook. A little black crappie. Temperature's falling out here, and these fish are a little tough to catch, but I love, hey, the sport of fishing, <laughs> no doubt. Let's let him go. There he goes. I changed colors right here to a little darker. Uh, instead of sharp trues, this one here has a green back. And it contrasts with the sky a little bit better, I think, in water. It, or it looks better to me. Uh, it's all about confidence. Fishing is. No doubt. Believing you're going to catch one. Hey, let's catch another one. There we go. Now this feels like a good fish right here, folks. Oh, me. Oh, me. If y'all don't care, I'm going to... Look here. Look here, what a crappie. Let me use my net. If y'all don't care. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Quit, quit. Oh, thank goodness for that net. Net. Can't talk now. Woo! As hard as they've been out here. Look here what I caught. I'm excited, folks. I can't help it. After all the years of fishing the Tennessee River, and now I've heard of it, and he's just got me hooked up everywhere. Ah, daggone it. That's a striped nose or black nose crappie. I've never caught one. I, there's a lot of folks that I've heard that has. Uh, I just don't catch them. In the areas that I fish here at the Tennessee River, I don't know why. Just unlucky, but look at that. Always bring your net. That is a beautiful fish right there. Uh, got him loose without tearing him up. Look at there. That's a beautiful fish right there. Uh, little strike king crankbait. What about that? All the crappie I've caught all these years. That's the first one. I'm excited about that. Let's turn the little feller loose. Ain't that pretty? <laughs> I catch a lot of them on the Coosa River system. There he goes. All right, folks, we done. Uh, we caught a few on the crankbait today. A uh, little strike king crankbait. Just another method or a way of catching crappie. Crappie hit a lot of baits. Uh, effective in some situations, but not in all situations. I mean, it, it has to be. On these big river systems, the fish has to be set up just perfect to really catch them. And today they wasn't uh, set up just perfect to really catch them, but we caught a few. Um, I want to give a special shout out to Tom from Louisville, Kentucky. Tom, you're responsible for me catching that crappie. Now, I have spent a uh, many a year on the Tennessee River and have wondered if I was going to live long enough to catch one of those. And um, I've seen pictures of a few caught on the Tennessee River, but I never have. That's why it excited me so much. And it's because of this six and a half foot rod, folks, that Tom sent me, 100% uh, fiberglass, which is a good rod for fishing with these tiny crankbaits, real forgiving. It won't allow the hooks to rip out quite as easy, but you better watch these hooks because it's hard to keep a crappie on these little hooks. I'm just gonna be honest. I've tried to change them out and put bigger hooks on them through the years and they don't run right, so. The hooks suit the crankbait, but it's pretty difficult, or it is for me to land them, but this rod done it today. And a two pound test line was the ticket, so it did work out pretty good. And also, Tom got me a shirt right here. It's custom made. It says, Richard Jean, the fishing machine. Thank you very much, Tom, for the stuff that you sent me. Don't wanna use it on this video, especially that rod. I'm talking about a many a year trying to catch a crappie like that. Uh, they're special crappie. I just love to catch them. And hey, thank y'all for watching. Thank you for all the great comments. 
and uh, just thank you. And remember, 